Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this episode we're going to try and do some wiring and see if this trigger wheel is even going to pick anything up. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get out uh, to the garage and uh, have a bit of a play. Right guys, so uh, yeah, what I've done is I've stuck some wires into the uh, loom itself. Um, I've just got power in uh, negative. Um, I think I've got injection one and ignition one, high volts, TPS, uh, intake and coolant temp sensors. And I think that's pretty much it. TPS, yeah, I've mentioned that. Obviously the map sensor itself is on the actual board itself. Um, I've chucked some wires. Again, you're just going to have to bear with me for these wires because everything's all over the shop just now because I just want to make sure this is going to work first before, um, you know, I put it all in neatly. And yes, I've put it in a plastic bag, but that's just so it doesn't short out on anything more than anything else. Um, what I've done here is I've put this plug on here. Uh, this plug is for the coil that I'm going to be using. Obviously, we can't use the standard CDI coil because it needs a 12 volts to trigger it, whereas we want a more modern, you know, it's supplied with 12 volts and it's actually triggered off the negative that goes to the ECU itself. What else we've got is obviously our inlet temp sensor and up here we've got coolant temp sensor up there. Um, TPS we've got here which I've just pulled off just now and uh, what we need to do is actually find out um, with the TPS which is the pinout for it because I can't find any info online for that so we'll do it the old fashioned way. What I've done here as well, you can see this coil, I actually got this supplied from uh, the guy itself, um, DIY EFI, uh, he supplied the coil, I think it was like 20 quid or something like that. I just got some HT lead I had lying about, and I've screwed it into the stock cap, so that'll just plug straight on. Um, so, hopefully this will work, well it should work, in theory. And that's it, I'll give him a, a, see, I'll give a massive uh, shout out to James at uh, DIY EFI. I've got his little sticker up here on the toolbox now. Uh, yeah, he's been uh, helping me out, he's supplied me this kit. And uh, top notch lad, uh, Ken's a crack, really interested in projects like this, so he's always keen to help out if you ever get stuck. Uh, and again, he supplied the Speedwino ECU I've put on the MX-5, uh, we've got that up and running now, and this is the Speedwino, the NC-02 for the quad, uh, and yeah, I hope, and let's see that it all kind of um, comes together, and then hopefully we can get some sort of RPM signal on the laptop. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the pinouts of this. It's just a 3 pin, which is generally 5 volts, um, a signal and a ground. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll maybe even cut this off and solder on new wires. Well, I say that, but I've uh, just been in my K20 wiring box. And uh, many of you know of uh, my car that I built has a Honda K20 engine in it. And uh, this is one of the cam sensor plugs. Perfect. Absolute minute, so uh, we'll have a proper plug for the TPS um, and it uh, should be golden. Right guys, so I've got um, here, I've got the two outside pins uh, connected up to my little meter and I'm getting 7k ohms there, so 7,000 ohms. And I move the um, TPS and I'm not getting any difference. So that tells me basically that these two here are... 5 volts and ground, or ground and 5 volts. Next one basically now is I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to put it onto there. And then when I move this, I should start to see a range. So going between here and the brown, typically on a K20, um, the Honda wire and the, the yellow with the black stripe is 12 volts. Um, how some systems are 5 volts, this is a 5 volts. Well, it's a 12 volt sensor, but it does the same thing. It's basically calculated on resistance. So I've come off here, which is the 12 volts um, usually, and this is the signal wire usually in the middle. And uh, as you can see there, I've got 7.3k ohms. And as I turn this here, you can see the value will drop. 4k ohms, 3k ohms, 2k ohms. And then down there we're to like 500 ohms. So that's going to give us a range for TPS. Right guys, TPS is now on. I've got my coil, uh, sorry, plug here, connector plug here. I have the TPS plug, sorry, that's not the TPS, that's the um, 
injector itself, single injector plug there with the tails, I have the tails here for the, the, and the temp sensor, basically we've got most, in fact we've pretty much got most of the cabling partially sorted, um, very much a mess just now, but please bear with me because uh, if you've been in a situation before you know it's going to end up nice, you just need to figure these things out because you don't want to put it all in a nice loom and then have to cut it apart again and add extra wires in and stuff like that. So what I want to do here is I've taken the trigger supply, this one here, these two, and it comes up into this loom and down where it goes into the stock CDI unit. Um, I've got these two um, here which come from it, the pickup itself is here and this little bulge here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to test and make sure I actually get a signal where you can see the 36 minus one tooth and I'm going to do that with this uh, oscilloscope that I bought from eBay um, and that should be able to show us um, the sort of signal we're getting and the shape of the curve. So yeah, let's switch this on. It might take me a little bit to set it up because um, I don't yet know um, how it's going to go, but um, like, let's uh, let's kind of go over and see what we've got. Yes, yeah, that's, that's uh, showing a sine wave. That sine wave um, is because it's a VR sensor. If it was a crank sensor, like a 5 volt crank sensor, you would see the square pattern. However, this Speedwino itself has a conditioner in it. The conditioner actually changes the square wave, uh, sorry, the sine wave into a square wave where the ECU can pick up and uh, we would get an RPM. So yeah, that's very good news because it looks a bit rough, but in essence it should work uh, because the conditioner should smooth it all out. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this is going to pan out. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get to it now and connect up some of the vital stuff that the ECU is going to need to see to start this thing up. Oh yes guys, come on. Right guys, so what I've done now is I've stuck in this relay, it's just a 12 volt 40 amp relay um, coming off the main battery supply just so I've got some sort of relay and things aren't on all the time. Uh, I'm going to switch this relay on, I'm using this wire here um, from the loom. This is off the original loom itself and that comes on when I... Uh, switch the ignition on. So uh, what I'm going to do is I just need to get the negative from here to the battery, connect up to his TPS wiring. That everything there looks like it's all plugged in now. Uh, what I'm going to do is if I put the ignition on, you can see it flashing in the bag and if I click here the fuel pump should come on. If you would just uh, zoom in. So I can keep the fuel pump off, but that's showing voltages on. Uh, computer's connected up, and you can see their voltage. If I kick this pump on, see if that changes. It does very slightly, 0 0.2 of a volt. Um, but yeah, I'm going to set up some parameters. I'm going to put the trigger pattern in, and uh, from there, we're going to calibrate TPS and see if we get an RPM signal. Well done. TPS. So close throttle zero. And I'm gonna go open. I can't quite do both at the same time, but I'm gonna go open then get current. So all done there was hold the throttle open itself and then click get current. So we'll accept. And now we'll see if this TPS works when I give it some throttle. Yeah, that's about yes. Yeah, <laughs> Perfect. Right, well that's cool. Uh, everything here looks fine. Ignore the inlet temps and the, the cool temps because we've not connected them up yet. We've not connected up the injector either or the coil because I just want to see if we can get an RPM signal. So uh, let's go for that now. Oh yes! Oh <laughs> yes guys! As you can see there, we've had a bit of pulse, duty cycle, so that means if, if the fuel injector was hooked up, that would have worked. That's absolutely awesome. Um, there's a wee spike there, but I've seen it cranking over around about 300 RPM. Um, yeah, so everything looks like it's going to work. So uh, what we'll do now is, because I've got the coil down here, 
I'm going to hook the coil up uh, to here and we're actually going to see if there's a spark. And if there's a spark, I tell you what, I'm going to be absolutely buzzing. Because this, this sort of thing doesn't normally happen, like, straight away. Like, you always have teething problems. This is why I've done it so rough and why I've, like, done the wiring the way I have. You know, leaving it very basic out the way just now because I've all, I always have problems with things. Um, but seeing that RPM signal, that's a good sign. Right, guys. Just stick this down there like that, just so it's got ground, um, because we want to see if we get sparked. And hopefully a camera will be able to pick us up, if it sparks. We'll try that again, because the camera doesn't seem to be picking up the spark. I don't know if it's because it's sparking too fast for the camera to pick up or something, but it's sparking every time. So let's try it again, see how we go on. We have a spark. Oh yes! I am absolutely buzzing with that. That's absolutely awesome news. So we've got spark, which is a major, put it that way. Um, so what I need to do now is I need to finally put this cover all back together again. I need to seal it up. I'm happy that we've got, obviously, an RPM. We're getting a spark. It's sparking twice per revolution, but that's called wasted spark setup. Because the engine doesn't know when it's at top dead centre for the um, exhaust or the compression stroke, it just sparks both times. It's quite a common setup. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll put it all you know, not put it all together, I'll just put the spark plug down to earth, I'll get my timing gun, I'll put that over the HT lead itself, and I'm going to shine it down into the um, the board itself to see if we can get the T, the top dead centre mark to mark up, so the physical timing of the engine is matched up with the ECU spark itself. Whew. Guys, this is going to work. Fingers crossed that all goes as well as it has been so far. But yeah, I'm absolutely ecstatic. The ECU is working, everything's doing as I'm telling it to. We've got spark now, we've got an accurate RPM. Fuel pump works. <laughs> We're uh, gonna main that pr maintain that pressure. Um, I seen some slight vacuum there as well in the vacuum port that was on, on here. So um, yeah. Sorry it's been a bit long winded guys, but it is quite technical this sort of stuff if you're new to it. A lot of googling and YouTube and helps and hopefully this video helps some of you guys. Right guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next vid. Cheers.